Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The only academy that gives you the credentials to become a certified tech and or certified inspector. Hey, Todd Henson here and I've got a special guest. This is Michael from Salty Vet Adventures, SVA. Yes. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, thank you for having me. Hey, I'm glad that you're here because you brought in a great question. You know, you said, hey, Todd, I wanna to talk about this. Isn't that right? I did. Really, what you talk about? Hitches. Hitches, now we're actually covering fifth wheels. <laughs> So what we're going to talk about, we're just going to confine it to fifth wheels, and we're going to talk about, of course, that the weights and everything else. So we have a fifth wheel. We know that the fifth wheel actually sits in the back of the truck, not on the bumper, but on the back of the truck. How much weight actually gets transferred over from the weight of the vehicle, from the weight of the RV? Well, Todd, that would be about 15% to 20% of the weight of the trailer should be over the axle of your truck. Yeah, yeah, by paper that is true. So basically what we're looking at is actually transferring a part of that weight over from the trailer. If we look at our trailer, there's no front wheels. And so that weight has to be transferred over. And so what we're gonna look at is the gross vehicle weight of our trailer. And you're saying to divide that or multiply that times 15% or 20%. And that's how much we know is being transferred over to our truck. Good rule of thumb, yes. Okay, now with that, how do we, what do we calculate that? When we put that on the truck, what do we call that? Well, you're gonna be worried about your uh, gross axle weight rating. Okay, that's one thing, your yeah. Carrying capacity of your truck. Cargo carrying capacity, yep, that's what we're looking for, right? Cargo or cargo carrying capacity. So we have the weight of our truck. Yes. And when we put that additional weight on there, that's cargo. There's the weight of the RV, there's the weight of the people, there's the weight of the fuel, anything we got in the back of the truck, that's called cargo, right? And so when we have our trucks, we have our cargo carrying capacity. Yes. How do we figure that stuff out? Because they don't list all that out on, the, on this little scale there. So what we need to do is we need to go over to some scales, like uh, cat scales or something like that. We really need to do two ways, right? We can weigh the truck by itself, right? We have our, weighting, uh, our rating. Now, here's the thing. They don't put that on the sticker. Why? Because you buy all these different packages at the dealership. If you want leather seats or anything else, that's going to add weight. You add all these different amenities, that adds weight. What they give us on that sticker is just the gross vehicle weight rating and then the axle rating. Okay, these axles are rated for 15,000 pounds, whatever it may be. So what we need to do is just go take our truck and go weigh it dry. In other words, without you in it or whatnot. Then we know that that is our curb weight or our dry weight. Now when we go bring our rig in and we set over, say, an RV or something like that, and we have that on there, now we've got our total weight sitting on our truck. And between those two, the difference between those two is our cargo carrying capacity. Yeah. Well, we now look at our axle ratings and let's see if we're over our axle ratings and we're too heavy. Correct. Right? But if we're under our axle ratings and we're under our GVRW, then our WR, then we're, we're right there. Unfortunately, we have to math. I wish they'd give us this information, but they don't. It's not hard math, though, Todd. No, it's not, as long as you know the numbers, right? Yeah. I think it's not hard math that people ask questions. And so you're thinking, are you telling me that they're stupid? I would never say that. Okay, but well. But did you know, Todd, that Cat Scales does have an app that you can put on your phone? Yep. And you can just drive up onto that scale, do it all from your phone, pay from your phone, and you get your ticket on your phone and you drive away. So it's easy. It's like $12 right now. And that's a new language, right? So when you pull up, if you don't have that app, you have to learn trucker lingo. Mm -hmm. When they pull up, they say it very fast and think about this. They do this over the speakerphone. First, I we right. You hit that button and then, uh, and then you try to decipher what they're saying. First way or reway? First way. What are they saying? First way or reway. Yeah, what does that mean? Well, you get the first way, you're going to get your first weights. <laughs> then, for truckers, they're going to pull off and they're going to go adjust their trailer axles and everything else they need they to go. adjust. And you get a second way for free, usually. Now, in our case, what we can do is we pull our truck and RV in and get the weight. Then we can go disconnect our RV and just bring the truck up there. That's our reway. And then, of course, we can do the math from there. I mean, it's kind of funny because when you say dry weight or curb weight, no one actually takes their rig up there, takes their truck and have nothing in it, have half a tank, no person in it, maybe a hundred pounds and get our curb weight. This is what you're gonna do, all right? We're doing our weight of our truck plus all of our cargo without the trailer, okay? So that's just our, just a term we'll say riding weight. You got your kids, you got your wife. Dog. 
you got your water bottles and all that stuff, you're just still going to get your weight. You still have your GVRW, or WR, then you're going to add your trailer. And now, again, that's where we look at. We look at the rear axle weight rating and make sure we're not over that because right. we can extrapolate that number. We have our steer axle weight rating as well. We're going to extrapolate that number. No, you don't have to take everything out. Just when you put it together, make sure you're not over the cargo carrying capacity. When you pull up on the on the scales, you're going to have to remember your steer. There's three plates on those scales. You got mm -hmm. your front plate for your steer axle, you got your middle plate for your drive axle, and then you got your back plate for your trailer axle. And you want to make sure it's easy to see. You're going to make sure that your tires are on each one so you get the correct weight. What do you do if you find yourself overweight? Well, you need to evaluate, reevaluate the tow vehicle you're towing with, obviously, because right. if you're that close to the limit, when I was starting out many years ago RVing, one thing I didn't realize was that you may have a trailer that's rated at, say, 16,000 pounds, but your axles, if you add up the weighing, weight rating on your axles, it's only about 14,000 pounds. How is that? Well, I know that's exactly opposite with a triple axle. <laughs> I my, on my rig, I'm rated for 19,500 pounds, but I got three axles rated at 21,000 pounds, right? Absolutely. What they're doing, just simple, is, you know, there's basically three size axles out there in the RV space. Mm -hmm. And if they know that 10 to 15% is being transferred over um, from the uh, trailer over to the truck, then they can get by with smaller size axles. I know it upsets a lot of people, but by physics, it does work. Yep. Is it the best? Yeah. Eh. Questionable. That's, that's where your weight distribution really starts coming in. And that's why getting your trailer weight at a cat scale where you can see the exact weight of your trailer axles is important. And there's your tech tip. If you want to be able to fix the majority of the problems on your ring, or let's say you want to open up a business, become a certified inspector or a certified RV technician, head over to our website at nrvta.com, click on programs and get started today. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I cut it off. I was Sorry. like, we're well in the two minutes. Well, okay. What do you do if you find yourself overweight? Well, you need to throw out your spice, your spouse. You could. Although yeah. she might throw you out, or he. That would get get us closer to the weight. <laughs> a little bit of planning can save you a lot of weight. Yeah. Yep. Also, did you know? <laughs> I'm a bad planner. <laughs> Sometimes, but how Sometimes. do we figure it out if it's not there? Listen to the question. Salty. <laughs> Okay, so the cargo carrying capacity is going to be basically the entire weight of your truck minus um, the total weight of your truck. Oh, what the How about crap? Just the, yeah, my gross vehicle weight rating is 19.5, but I got three seven pounds. <laughs> I mean, I was going for, hey, we, <laughs> that case of water is four bucks. Well, that's true. You buy a new truck. <laughs> Drive axle? That makes sense to me too, Todd. That's what, what? Oh, well, you're the one asked the question. Uh, I'm letting you give the answers. Well, your drive axle you're is coming off like a smart oh, on my show. So. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Ask me what do I do if I find myself <laughs> overweight. <laughs> You'll grab onto the ohm bars in the bathroom. <laughs> Let it <go. laughs> All right. What do you do if you find yourself overweight? Well, I've never had that situation. I kind of like the scales because above 300, I have to go get on those scales to weigh myself. So I, I weigh myself with the truck, and then I get myself out of the truck. Yeah. Get my two weighting, my two weights. That, I, I don't know I if they're that accurate. Yeah. 